Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. Today's video, we're going to be covering uh, factoring completely, right? So when you're told to factor completely, you have to take a problem, and usually like these two special difference of two square problems, um, will take different precedences when factoring. Sometimes we have to look for the GCF, which is always the first step in factoring. Then we look for factoring capabilities for the problem. Like, is it a difference of two squares? Is it a difference of two cubes? Is it a sum of two cubes? Or does it take a different principle altogether? In this case, we're going to be dealing with the difference of two squares, mainly, okay? So our first step in looking at both of these problems will be looking to see if we could find the GCF, right? After finding that GCF, we're going to see if we can continue with factoring. And remember, uh, the formula that's going to help us here is the conjugate pairs, which are a squared minus b squared, which formulate out to be a minus b times a plus b. And it doesn't matter the order that these two come. You could have the plus before the minus. It's the same set of factoring, okay? So let's start with our first problem here. We have 9x squared y's minus 25y cubes. And we're looking at both terms and seeing if they have anything in common. And we both, we see both of these problems, uh, these terms have a y term in them. So the way to factor out the GCF when you're dealing with variables is to take that variable and take it to the smallest exponent that they both have in common. And we see here there's a 1, here there's a 3, so we're going to factor out the 1y, right? The y to the first power. After you factor it out, you're going to extract this y from each term by dividing each term with this y. So we have 9x squared. After we divide this by y, the y's go away. Subtract. And when we divide this 25y cubed by y, we're going to have two y powers here left. So it's going to be y squared. So we're going to have 25y squared. And now we notice that these are two perfect squares. We know they're perfect because the variable is a perfect square. And the numbers themselves are perfect squares. To develop these numbers, what you can do is square each number you know. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared 25. And here we have the 25 and the 9. So we know these are two perfect squares. Now, as far as my a term and my b term go, I'm considering that a squared is equivalent to 9x squared. And if I take the square root of both sides here, I'm going to have a equals 3x's. And my b term here, which is b squared, which is 25y squared, I'm going to get 5 squared again, right? So this b becomes 5y, and when I square 5y, I get 25y squared. So I'm going to use this formula to break this down based on my a and my b value here, considering there's a y outside. So I have a y. My a term is 3x's, I have a minus symbol, my b term is 5y's, that's done. I move on to my next set of parentheses where I have an a plus a b. So it's the same two values of 3x and 5y's, and I just need a sum between them. And that takes care of factoring completely my first piece of this problem. My next piece here has both a variable and a number in common. So what we're going to first do is look for the GCF within the numbers. And when we look at the numbers, we have to consider what numbers make both 12 and 48 so we can extract the largest of these numbers. Now, when I look at 12, I'm looking for all the numbers 12s make as well as 48. And 12 by 1, that gives me 24. 12 by 2 is 20. 12 by 1 is 12. 12 by 2 is 24. 12 by 3 is 36. And 12 by 4, 48. So I know they both have 12 in common. So since they both make 12 here, this is times 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, I'm going to factor out the 12 out of both of the terms. So I have a 12 in common. What else do I have in common? Well, this has a y, this has a y, this also has an x and an x. And again, I'm taking the smallest powers of each variable they have in common. So this has an x and a y. What's left over? If I divide this by 12xy's, 12x cubed times y divided by 12xy's, would just give me x squared. Negative 48xy cubed will give me negative 4y squared. And again, I have still a perfect set of two squares here, where my a squared term is just x squared, my b squared term is just 4y squared. The square root of 
a squared is a, the square root of x squared is x, the square root of b squared is b, the square root of 4y squared is 2y. We see that right here, right, where we see the perfect square 4. And now again, I'm just going to use this parenthesis set to finish off my problem. So now, to finish this factor step, I'm going to bring down my 12xy's, which are factored out, the greatest common factor here. And I'm going to break down the rest of this using what I used before, with my a's and my b's and my perfect square, the difference of two square formula. And so I know I'm going to have a minus b, which is x, take away two y's, and then a plus b, which is going to give me x plus two y's. And that takes care of our factoring completely problem. Thank you.